Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. So let me, let me tell you about my, my problem with today's scripture. <laughs> it's a prelude to a genocide story. <laughs> now the version that we told the kids today was the PG version of what they're going to learn about trusting God because they, the people did trust God and they were able to accomplish what they hoped to do. And so that's a good thing. But here we have a prelude to something that happened to a group of people. So the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua is what? The sixth chapter, sixth book of the Hebrew scriptures. The first book after the most important books, the Pentateuch, the Torah. And it is the final act of something that started way back in book number two, the Exodus, where the people came out of, it, out of, out of slavery into the wilderness and then they were promised to come to the prom uh, promised land, and now they're there. Moses has passed away, and has, and has gone on to Joshua, and he's told to be courageous and to be strong. And so the people were able to come into the land. Now, our, now the adult version says that when the walls came tumbling down, the army and the people rushed into the city, and they destroyed everything there. The men, the women, the children, the livestock, the things, and everything, except that was put aside for the Lord, the silver and the gold, and those kind of things, in one family. And pretty much the whole book of Joshua, is it kind of like that, about how, how God was helping the people prevail to enter the land for their own manifest destiny, because there were already people there. And so they took the land. Now, we already get the sense when we read the book of Joshua that there's something else going on because we know that in the book of Judges because that's the next book, and it gives us a different version about how the people kind of wandered into the land, and they little by little became part of the culture there until David came along and made them a great nation. And we get the sense that by the time Joshua was written as a version that we have some 800 years later, there was something else going on. And the something else going on was that by that time for the people of Israel, their walls had been torn down and their possessions had been taken and they were now living in exile and they needed some heroes to hold on to. And so David and Joshua became good heroes to tell their story. And Joshua was a person of faith and a person of skill and he became the person they could rally around about being strong and being courageous. We need to hear that story from time to time because we need to hear the story of being strong and being courageous. But we have a different kind of story. Our story is based on the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's why we built a foundation today. You guys did a pretty good job up here, by the way, making a good foundation. Because our story is one about building up and making things strong and only tearing things down when it comes to injustice or oppression. You see, there's another version of modern scholarship about the story of Joshua that says that the people had entered the promised land, but the Israelites lived out in the countryside, and they were being overtaxed and oppressed by the elite in, in uh, Jericho. And so there was an uprising that allowed a different kind of a system, and that kind of adds a whole new twist to the story. Our story is about building a strong foundation Churches are about making foundations. That's why we sent the kids off to Sunday school today, was to build up their foundation of faith so they can have something to strong, strong to stand on and so that we have a foundation for when things come our way. Because I know for myself, I can sort of think about four or five times in my life when walls have come, come tumbling down, either personally or in the community, and we need something to stand on. And that's something to stand on is our faith in God and the love of Jesus Christ. So I'd like to make a proposal today that reminds us why we're here today. We're here today to learn about the love and the grace and the peace of our faith that gives us a foundation to go forward and to stand on and to be the kind of people that we want to be. I don't know whether you know this or not, but this year is going to be your year 
I don't know whether you knew that or not. But during transition, the, the year before the minute, new minister comes is your year. If you were here a couple weeks ago, Cliff Limholm stood up here and he, he gave us his timeline of getting the new minister here. And he told us that your new minister will be here one year from today. Isn't that what you said, Cliff? That's what he said. <laughs> and he's pretty tenacious about that. So, and it might be about a month before that or a month after that, but that's the target. So this is your year. And I'm here to preach and to teach and to do pastoral care and to give you some suggestions and, to give, and pull together some things that you're excited about so that you can have the best year ever, so that you can be the Church of Jesus Christ. But I think what you'll discover is that one of the issues is going to be time. There was a study done in 1992 by the Department of Labor that said that the average worker that year had four hours less leisure time than the average worker in 1972. My hunch is it hasn't got much better since 1992. And that's an interesting thing, fact for us because we're a congregational church that says the church is run by the people. It's about people coming together and doing things and working on things and governing the church and, and setting out the the programs and the ministries and the missions of the congregation and rallying people around to be the church. And so we have to figure out how we're going to do that and what kind of professional help that we need or what kind of assistance that we need to do that or what we need to bring in. For example, one of my advanced degrees is in evangelism and church growth. So I have a system about how to do that. And I'd be glad to share that if that becomes important. But you have to be interested in it because... One of the things that we do is to live our faith. Once on a seashore next to the ocean, there was a little hut that was a life-saving station. And there was volunteers with one little boat that day in and day out would go out into the ocean, and whenever there was a shipwreck, they would save the people and bring them to, line, to, to land. <coughs> And they, they did this day in and day out until the fact that the light, little life-saving station became famous. It became so famous that the people who had been saved and others wanted to be associated with the, with the life-saving station. So they got trained how to do it and took their turn and, and decided that the little hut, you know, just wasn't quite good enough anymore. And so they replaced the cots with beds and got bigger, better furniture and made the building a little bigger and while they were doing their work. And pretty soon, it got to be a place where people would gather because it was such a pretty spot on the ocean that they would have social events there. And after a while, people became less and less interested in volunteering for the, to going out into the ocean to look for, that, to look for people. And so they hired other crews to do that and they got more boats and they kind of turned it over to other people and they carried on their, on their work. And then one day, right about the time they had remodeled and, and, and made, made their building even nicer, a big ship shipwrecked, and the volunteer and the, and the crews brought in all kinds of half-drowned people that were cold and hungry, and some were black, and some were yellow, and some were a lower class, and they made the, the life-saving station a mess. And so the first thing that the property committee did was to build showers so that people could shower before they came into their building. And when they had their next meeting, there was a split in those that were, that were there. Some wanted to give up the life-saving work because it was taken away from, the, from their social activities. And other people said, no, that's why we're here. Don't you say we're called the life-saving station? We have this liturgical boat over our over our, our room that we have our initiations and so there was this big discussion and the people who wanted to still be a life saving station got voted down and they were told that if they wanted to be a life saving station they could go someplace else to do that so they did 
So they went down the shore a little bit and they built another building and they went about, about the work of life saving. But over time, you know, it got to be kind of a social thing and they kind of gave up the work and there was a split and then there was another, another little hut b bit and built and they did that work and et cetera, et cetera. So that if you go to that seashore today, there's these lovely clubs that overlook the ocean that are great social, social places but people still drowned. You see, my friends, there are people in the world still drowning. They're drowning from their hurts and they're drowning from their loneliness and they're drowning from their unsureness and they're drowning in what's important in life and they're drowning as, does anybody care? And that's what we do. We tell people to come to this place and to discover the divine, that God loves them, that God cares about them, and God wants them to show them the way to follow Jesus Christ, to show them the way of peace and justice and grace. And pretty soon when we follow the ways of Jesus, we discover that we're kind of graceful ourselves, and we're sort of peaceful. And that becomes grace and peace that we live in our world and in our life, and our lives are better. And we get to the place of inviting people to come walk with us and to find this wonderful way to live and to have a wonderful way to serve and have a wonderful way to be together because that's what we do. We are a body of Christ that is called to worship together and to live together and to learn together and to serve together and together to make the world a better place. That's what we do. And you can decide how we're going to do that this year because this is your church and this is your place. May God give us the grace to find our way.